Okay, so this is March 6, 2017. It's about 1.30 right now. About 12.30, we, I, I was basically awoken by the, by the harp Gwen frequencies. Yeah, we've had a, today, or yesterday, we had quite a bit of, uh, uh, weather variation, we had rain, hail, uh, periods of, of sunshine, uh, wind, probably 30 to 40 miles an hour, and so what the, uh, I don't know if you can see that. It looks like we're, we've got a full moon. So there's a cloud out there that's sort of illuminated by the moon, I believe. I don't see the moon, but I think that is the moon illuminating those clouds out there. I don't know if you can see that or not. I don't know if you can hear that or not either. But it's like someone's running a boom box and basically what it does is you don't actually hear the audible frequency, you hear it in your inner ear or in this case it's like part of your brain and it doesn't allow you to think beyond the box, basically. It doesn't allow your thoughts to uh, wander uh, sort of beyond your basic physiological functions. And so <clears throat> that's my experience. Um, I tried to go to sleep earlier uh, yesterday and I noticed just before I was falling asleep that it, it, it felt like I was sort of confined in my thinking. So, uh, and I think I've, okay, yeah, there is the full moon right there kind of poking through there. So that was a little, a little surprising to see that. I have seen that before, but uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but basically we've got a full moon. Like I said, it's probably, you know, uh, uh, March 7th already, early in the morning. And we don't have any wind at all. We can see that those clouds are moving because that, I don't know if you can see that or not, but basically uh, the moon is poking through there a little bit. And it seems like we have, there's the moon right there. We have loud music. And this is, this is the bay right there so I it, I don't know if I can identify the tower but basically uh, the tower is tower is right over here that's like one of the main towers you can't actually see it there's no lights on it apparently it's not high enough to have lights but 
Yeah, that's uh, what's going on. And uh, it's a very subtle thing. And so you probably might uh, think you were having a migraine headache or something. If you didn't know anything about harp, you might think you're experiencing a migraine headache. Uh, there's actually a tower right there. A small one across the street. But anyway, I think one of uh, my favorite radio shows that co that comes on in the evening uh, was monitoring for anyone who called up to talk about these frequencies. Now this is Northern California and it may be different it, wherever you are but the frequencies will actually change. They will change, change to a head frequency to a a reproductive frequency. So basically it will change from a sort of a frequency that sort of locks your thoughts or locks your creativity in your brain and then shift immediately down to a uh, frequency that vibrates your sexual organs and so yeah basically it's it's what I call sonic weaponry so they're using these frequencies to manipulate people, manipulate humans, and once again, if you didn't know of such a thing, you would just think it would be some sort of natural phenomena that you're experiencing, maybe, maybe a, a microwave or a, a migraine headache. Yeah, microwave headache. A migraine headache. Freudian slip there, excuse me. <clears throat> a migraine headache and or if you were uh, female, you might think you're just going through some uh, monthly cycle thing or something. And so, yeah. They're going off, and here we have actually clearing these clouds up here are they're moving <clears throat> they're moving south east at sort of a varying speed now once again, we have no wind at all. And these clouds up above me are, they're pulsing. Basically, they're pulsing. They're on now, moving about 20 miles an hour, maybe 10 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour, something like that. Yeah, they're, they're continually moving at this point. Uh, it one point it looked like they were pulsing but they're continually moving so
So now they're actually moving a bit south. So it's a, now they're actually moving. Well, they've stopped. It's a pulse, basically. It looks like a pulse. Yeah, it's a pulse, basically. But they they will move for a minute or so. Now they're now they're pulsing. Yeah, they're actually going back and forth. Exactly. So, yeah, we've got weather manipulation here and as well whether the weather manipulation is affecting uh, humans or it's actually uh, targeted for humans uh, to basically Well, I mean, one motive could be that, you know, people will be complaining about migraines to their doctor or complaining about insomnia. And, you know, their doctors or big pharma will be selling them these medications to suppress the symptom. And so there's a motive there. Think about it, you know. Everything's got a motive. What do they say? Follow the money. So, yeah, so I was going to try and sleep it off. Sometimes I can sleep it off when we have these uh, harp blast-offs uh, or harp transmissions. Uh, but tonight I couldn't just simply because I think that, well, more people should probably know about the possibility of this happening. Um, it's just my theory that I've accumulated over the last couple, maybe two years of research and Actually, I've been researching uh, frequency and the human body for probably more like 10 years. But the lesser is the harp broadcast, the, the actual broadcast uh, to the general public of these frequencies. So, Zbigniew Brzezinski, many of you remember him. He's one of the founders of the Trilateral Commission. He was National Security Advisor to Jimmy Carter when he was President of the United States. Uh, this book was written when he was at Columbia University uh, back in the early 1970s. Um, what's important in, in this book, from my perspective, is if you read it today, it's a history. It's not a forecast. It talks about what would happen as a result of technologies um, from, the, from the Americas, Africa, Europe, Eastern Europe, uh, Asia. If you read it today, it's it's a it, it is so right on in terms of its predictions. And some would say it wasn't a prediction; it was a conspiracy. If you're in his shoes; it was planned. We already talked about that, uh, but it did happen. Okay. Now, on page 54 to 56 of this book are some really important things, and there were some observations, some quotes uh, from an earlier publication called the Less Peace Conference, which was published in uh, 1969. And in that, there was a chapter. Uh, called How to Wreck Your Environment, which this is before Earth Day, 1969, so people were still thinking in that frame. You know, and and as, we, as I said earlier, even conservatives in Europe are awake enough to realize you can't destroy this planet without destroying yourself, uh, and I, I appreciate all of that. But what he said, what, uh, what, he, what he quoted was a guy named uh, J.F. Gordon MacDonald. Um, uh, MacDonald was a science advisor, Lyndon Johnson. He was a professor of uh, geophysics um, at, at uh, UCLA. And what he said is, if we could ever figure out how to electronically stroke the ionosphere in just the right way, we could return a signal to the Earth that would manipulate the behavior um, of populations over huge geographic areas. Now, what was important about that is, in 1969, when he made that quote, and in the early 70s when it was requoted by Brzezinski, the technology, as far as we know, didn't exist. Um, Hart provided that way to electronically stroke the ionosphere uh, in just the right way. Now going back to this slide, this is a high frequency transmitter that 
through uh, primary and secondary effects can actually cover 16 decades of frequency, everything from very low frequency to visible light uh, by manipulating the signal and manipulating uh, components of the natural environment. Think about it um, as if you're plugging in with this little bitty small transmitter into the earth and then being able to manipulate the earth by manipulating the energy itself and being able to capitalize on that energy which is huge amount of energy that the earth has available to it if you could figure out how to trigger it and that's really what a lot of harp was all about now this idea of earth penetrating tomography in the elf range within that range um, if we think about sort of where our brains are at um, in our deepest states of sleep one to four hertz delta state where we're really out cold theta um, running approximately four to seven hertz or pulses per second vibrations per second um, this is where you are in that kind of twilight stage between awake and asleep where you're conscious of your dreams. Um, this is where three to six year olds spend most of their time. You know, if you, I have five children, you know, I, I remember this. I got four grandchildren, I remember this. You know, it, it confused the imaginary with, with the real because this is where they're at. And, and we call them attention deficit disordered. <laughs> and they're not. This is their normal state of consciousness, which is why Europeans are way ahead of the game. They generally don't start their children in school until around seven. Um, which makes sense because then they're ready for the academic learning. Um, approximately 7 uh, to, to 12 hertz or pulses per second, the alpha range, that zone if you're an athlete or a writer, that creative place. I mean, the ideal state of learning is there. And then above that range, uh, the beta ranges, and then, and then further up where you get increasingly more agitated um, the higher that uh, frequency goes. What, what there is and has been discovered, and, and the book I'm out of now is uh, Controlling the Human Mind, um, what they discovered is frequency following response, FFR. This is the idea of the brain locking onto an external signal, beginning to mirror that signal, um, and essentially locking onto that external signal. And these don't have to be very powerful, they just have to be within the window frequencies that the brain will recognize, and then you begin to follow them. Consequently, your emotional state can be altered or changed. On a, on a pretty mass uh, scale. Now, if you're near field, you have uh, something near you that has a stronger signal within the, approximately the same ranges, you'll tend, to, you'll tend to move that direction versus something that's very weak coming from um, the ionosphere. But this did exactly what a J.F. Uh, McDonald suggested, is the ELF range could be generated and then this uh, frequency following response created in large segments of the population. From my perspective, this became really, really important, and now that everybody's taken my car, struck me about this, and, 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 and I'll show some more overheads on this, but there was a, a publication called Orienteer, it's a military journal published in uh, Russia. Uh, there was an article uh, published there on mind effects that was pretty interesting to me. Um, this was reprinted in uh, the U.S. Army War College uh, quarterly called Perimeters. I believe it was the winter of 1998, but you, you can look it up. Um, and, and, and the article in the U.S., you can look up the article name on the Internet. It's called The Mind Has No Firewalls. And, the, and I'm just going to read one quote. It's a lengthy article, but I'll just read one quote that kind of puts this into perspective. And this is what it says. A psychotronic generator which produces a powerful electromagnetic em emanation capable of being sent through telephone lines, TV, radio networks, supply pipes, and incandescent lamps. This signal would manipulate the behavior of those in contact with the signal, unquote. Then he goes into a bunch of other um, ideas around the same theme, essentially saying that any of these carriers, uh, you, could, you could manipulate that signal so that you could create this FFR, this frequency following response. What's important, um, and I'll put this in context of, of, of even politics and marketing, the, the frequency following response is taught in every um, uh, college that teaches uh, psychology these days because they utilize um, th this knowledge. Now, this is not restricted in terms of how you can utilize it. So something as simple um, as the flicker rate on a, a television screen can, is sufficient that within 20, 30 seconds to create that response in most people. Now, when you come home, most people go home, they watch television, they're tired, they're fatigued, they sit down, they're watching the television, their husband or wife is hollering, dinner's ready, dinner's ready, and they're totally entranced, right? I mean, we've all seen it. Everybody's laughing, right? You've seen it because you've been there. Um, and you are. You're in this light, sort of trance-like state. Well, then you add in the flicker rate and, and how you can tell there is a flicker rate and whether it's a coherent rhythmic signal. Just look at the white wall behind you when it's playing and then you can get a, a, an idea of that. 
But you can then run the flicker rate in such a way that within just very few seconds you actually are in a very suggestive state. The regular ad, the overt advertising hits you. Most people don't have firm opinions on very much, so you can move a percent or two of the population in a certain direction. For political purposes, you can see the ramifications of that pretty easily. If you remember during uh, George Bush Jr.'s first election, he got in trouble for using subliminals, where he's using words, and the Democrats, and he had the rats and the stuff, you know, and, and then he got caught and they shut that down. Well, that, that's regulated and, and creates those kind of controversies, but the flicker rate, FFR, doesn't do it. And, and, and I want to mention that the easiest form of mind control, the easiest form, all you have to do is give the population a sense of anxiety, worry, or fear. And as, as soon as you have that in a population, you cannot reach your higher states of consciousness. It is impossible to reach your higher states of consciousness. So the easiest manipulation, the Baptist minister is known for years, and the government's known even longer. <laughs> you know? and, and when you think about it, it's pretty simple. You know, if, if you can let go of the fear, then you can reach these higher states of consciousness where actually solutions can be developed and, and resolutions um, uh, uh, created. Uh, and, and I want to say a little bit more of that because I was, I was alluding to it um, earlier when I was talking about how many people sort of fall off the edge of this work. Usually it's they, they begin to get fearful. They be in this, the alternate energy field, you, know, you see a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety. Uh, you're done. As soon as you're there, you're done. You're not going to be effective. You're probably not going to achieve your objectives unless it's strictly by mistake and the randomness of the odds. Um, that is the adversary. And, and I think as we step into each thing that we do, we should only step into what we know we can do. Do that first. The next thing reveals itself. You know, have a general direction. Do what you know absolutely in your heart and in your mind you can accomplish. You'll do it with confidence. You'll do it fearlessly. Um, and people have asked me, aren't you afraid? Aren't you afraid? No. The answer is no. I never have been. And the minute I am, I stop this work because then I've gone beyond the capability that I believe I can achieve. And I think so, all yeah, that's my report. And uh, be awake and beware. Thanks for tuning in.